Oh, wow. You seem completely different, Reed. Well, I read your application to become a medic. What's your plan? So your idea is you light the enemies on fire so that relative to them, the operators are in a less painful state. How does, how does that heal anyone? I personally think that doesn't really cure anyone of their injuries. In fact, I think it actually would have scarred them to death with PTSD. Reed got the buff she deserved. She finally stepped out of Bagpipe's shadow and immediately fell into her sisters. Reed Alter is an incantation medic, meaning she attacks enemies and heals operators in her range for half the damage she dealt. Her healing is directly tied to half her damage, so in a situation where your ops are taking damage and Reed has no one to hit, it's Jover. You can rely on her healing most of the time, but occasionally you'll have to either swap her out or do some funky placement and facing adjusting to to fix this problem. Her first talent gives her attacks a certain chance to land her own special debuff on the enemy for 6 seconds. The debuff reduces the enemy's attack and makes them take more arts damage. It's in general not that crazy, minus 20% enemy attack is nothing compared to Shamada's hella droppable minus 50% attack or Moose's 100% uptime minus 40% attack, and even though the arts fragility is stackable with Seria S3, it loses to the female brawler's 55% arts damage amplification. This isn't to say Reed's debuff is bad. Bad. The effects aren't broken, but they're good enough, which is sometimes all what you need in life. Her second talent lets her heal herself for 25% of the damage she dealt when she's healing other operators. This may seem small, but the fact that Reed can heal two targets at once, herself and another op, helps increase her sustain since her healing gets less reliant on her attack interval, making her stronger against AoE or multi-target damage sources. Reed Alter's second skill plops three swirling fireball circles on two operators in her range. Yes, operators, not allies, so the skill doesn't apply to summons. She prioritizes the last deployed melee ops first, but if you really wanted to, you can have a ring of fire around your Durin. Each fireball rotates counterclockwise, dealing damage to an enemy every 1.5 seconds. The operators with the fireballs on them also get that special read second talent magic, basically receiving more healing from her damage. Obviously, enemy operators like La Pluma or Heliger won't benefit from the healing because it's the funny green number, which isn't passive healing. Alright, this skills kind of whatever just some fireballs on some ops with decent healing and reads a medic surely she doesn't have that much damage ah yes my worst fear being sandwiched between two women and just like that poor boss i would also spontaneously combust and die in that situation you see for some reason read alter s2's dps is insane when you split box the enemy between two operators with fireballs how insane well if you've ever used xu against low defense think like that except now it's arts damage which diminishes with arts resistance but hold your horses this setup is a bit jank to well set up you need to dedicate three ops to deleting and sandwiching a single enemy, which in most cases is not worth it. It's also pretty bad against high or even medium res enemies because Reed doesn't have any precious arts resistance ignore. In general, there's probably a smarter way to kill the enemy you don't like instead of putting them into a double ring of fire featuring Seria and Sidor as block buddies, but it's nice to know that this skill has the potential to go hard. Reed's third skill increases her attack and lets her attack two targets at once. Anyone she hits during the skill duration gets inflicted with her special debuff from her first talent, and all enemies inflicted with that debuff take arts damage every second based on Reed's attack. If an enemy dies during the skill duration and they have her talent 1 effect on them, they explode, dealing arts damage and spreading the uh, I mean the debuff to all the other enemies in a 1.7 tile radius. Once the skill duration ends, the debuff will be removed from all the enemies that have it. Even though I already talked about how her damage is not as insane as people make it out to be in a previous video, it's still pretty good. The bigger issue is that the damage can vary widely depending on the enemies. For example, most of you have seen that one chapter 11 stage with all the basic enemies flooding at you. Those guys practically have no res and no health, so the explosion and DOT deal enough damage to kill everything, which is how you get those map-wide cascades. In an event like Dark Knight's Memoir where the enemies have a decent amount of arts resistance, Reed's not gonna be pulling out any nuclear codes. What's what's actually awesome about the skill is its healing. When the skill is up, no one in Reed's range is dying as long as she's damaging something. The skill also has really good uptime too, so your squad can handle heavy amounts of damage for long periods of time. Hey Lin, I've heard you have a lot of experience in glasscrafts. Could you show me some of your work? Wow, oh, this is pretty cool. 
I really like how it's a cute. Oh. Ever since her debut in Chen's Mistake, Lin has been the character at the top of most people's get out of NPC jail please HG I'll sacrifice my first newborn child for her list. And here she is. And just like the title of the video, she's quite... interesting. Lin's part of the Phalanx caster branch, which is the thick archetype, fitting for an operator drawn by Leduc. They don't attack normally, but get twice the defense and 20 arts resistance when their skills are down. When they attack, they hit everything in their diamond shaped range. So, how tanky is Lin? While at E2 max level in trust, she has over 800 defense and 35 arts resistance, making her tankier than 6 star defenders at the same level. Unlike the other operators in her branch, Lin actually makes use of her tankiness through her talents. She wants to get hit, and no, not in that way. Her first talent is a bit convoluted, it gives a shield that negates all damage instances below 200. It's not even like a, oh you do 5% minimum damage negation. Lin just straight up says, nah never mind, to all damage 200 and below. And this is after her heavy defensive stats too. Poison maps? She do not care. M88 CM Mephisto's poison? She do not care. Patriot Spear? Okay maybe she has to care about that one. If she gets hit by an attack that deals more than 200 damage to her, her shield breaks dealing arts damage and stunning all the enemies in her range, and she'll no longer invalidate all damage below the shield threshold until it comes back up again in 8 seconds. The attack that broke her shield will also do 200 damage less to her. Lin's second talent gives her a coin flip chance to get SP when she's attacked. It's not hard to see how this synergizes with her first talent. You put her in a spot where she takes no damage from enemies, which shouldn't be too hard because of her first talent that nullifies all damage taken below 200, and now her skills charge faster. Lin's third skill increases her attack and expands her range to a Seria S2. It increases her shield's damage threshold to three times, meaning now she will invalidate all attacks that deal 600 damage or less to her. If she kills an enemy, the barrier will shatter and instantly come back. This skill is a little deceiving because it might seem like she can tank more physical damage with her shield since the damage threshold is now 600 instead of 200, but remember that she loses a lot of her defense when her skill is up. The difference isn't that much, though her physical damage tanking gets a little bit lower if S3 is active. For arts damage, that extra 20 arts resistance off skill isn't much negation compared to the shield threshold, so she'll actually be able to tank arts damage better when S3 is up. Lin's attack stat with the skill up seems high, but her DPS isn't that great due to her 2 second attack interval. When she does hit though, she hits hard, which is great for shattering and regenerating that shield to stun all the enemies in her expanded range. Overall, Lin has a lot of mechanics to play with. She has a kit that actually makes use of the tankiness of Phalanx Gasters, and turns out when you have an operator that isn't straight up damage damaging even more damage, you get something interesting. What are my thoughts on your sister? Which, which one? Oh yeah, Lin... Uh, yeah, the the blue one, she's, uh, yeah. Yeah. Chongyue is the fourth Nian sibling to be released, representing the military or something. I, I don't know Chinese lore. And I'm definitely not pronouncing his name right, but at this point, I've butchered enough names and I might as well go for an 11 kill streak for the AC-130. His first talent gives his basic attacks a 23% chance to make the target receive 65% more damage from him for 2.5 seconds. For all of you math nerds, no, this isn't attack scale. It's damage amplification, which is worse for physical damage. The chance might seem small, but Chong Yue's main skill, his third, lets him get this off pretty easily that you'll see later. Now, I don't know if it's just me, but a 65% damage amp is a lot, so this talent is already pretty goaded. His second talent gives him 3 SP if he kills an enemy with a skill. Since all his skills are instant attacks with short SP costs, this talent with a bit of precision can make them spammable. Just think of it as playing League of Legends and farming CS, but instead of gold, your reward is listening to a deep velvety male voice whisper his catchphrases into your ear. Chong Yue's third skill charges by him attacking. It deals AoE big physical damage to an enemy. After using the skill 5 times, it turns his range into basically Saga S2 and makes all his attacks deal 2 hits, including the skill. The skill becomes automatically activated too. 
Basically, what you do with the skill is you feed him enemies and press a skill button so he can last hit the early mobs and get SP from his second talent. Once you proc it 5 times, the skill charges twice as fast because remember, all his attacks hit twice and now he punches everything to death. The physical damage modifier is really high on this one, so even though it seems like his basic attacks do no damage, the big hit comes in and can chunk down heavy defender enemies with no problem. Remember, he also has his first talent that lets him get his own damage amp on enemies which will turn his big damage into This joke has been removed from the video for being the third video in a month with the Jojo reference. I know lots of you want to start comparing lane holders, so we'll take a look at what Chong Yu trades versus Mountain. Cool things Mr. Chong himself has. More damage and wall hacks. Cool things Mountain has, block count, regen, and becoming a pseudo AoE guard. Honestly, the biggest thing you're missing out when using Chongyue is that self-sustain, but that's an easy fix with Skulter, or if you're less fortunate, an actual medic. Your opening also might be a bit rough, because you need to feed Chongyue enemies for 5 skill procs, though once he has that skill up, his damage is insane enough to beat everything to death before it touches him, and he can even help other lanes with that range expansion. Also, no shut up, Mountain hasn't been power crept. 